Good morning, good morning. Um, we are just about to start. Um, I see all that you have joined. Um, we are a little bit um, a minute early, but we will start in just a few minutes. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for being prompt. Be able to, um, we should be able to control um, their well within our capabilities. So um, in starting, is just an understanding of what has changed with the new Tribal Land Act. Um, first of all, it's the development requirement. Anybody who has um, had the, um, anybody who has had um, transfer in the past few months would know that you can be able to purchase land directly, tribal land directly. It doesn't require you to have any kind of habitable um, development as it used to be before. Um, before, before, before the Travel Land Act, there was a requirement that before, before you sell it, you should have some level of development on it. Otherwise, you can't sell it. So that's the first thing. Now you can sell Travel Land outright. Um, you can sell it as it is, and then sales to non-citizens. Non-citizens being non-citizen company uh, and non-citizen um, persons. And for a company, it, there's no um, clarity as to um, if there is a 50% um, holding for a citizen uh, in, in a non-citizen company, is it considered non-citizen citizen? But from the engagement that we have had with the land boards and with the, the land authorities is that as long as there is a non-citizen um, shareholder or beneficiary in the company, um, it is considered as a non-citizen. So any non-citizens purchasing tribal land, this um, transaction has to be um, public, there should be a public notice about it, um, obviously the 21 day public notice and the transaction would have, the public notice has to have all of the transaction details. And that means the plot number, um, the size of the transaction, who is buying from who, um, when is the transaction supposed to happen and all of that, all of that stuff is detailed. Um, and you then submit that um, publication to um, the land boards when you're doing the, the transfer. This purpose of the publication is also to allow for citizens who might be interested in that particular parcel of land to see that opportunity and they may be the preferred um, buyer um, to the, the, the land authorities instead of the, 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 um, the non-citizen person or company that you may have identified in the selling of your travel land. So there is some um, discretion in terms of the transfer of um, tribal land to non-citizens with um, preference given to um, the citizen um, buyer or the citizen purchaser to keep the land owned by citizens of Botswana. The second thing that has changed is the security of Turner. Um, if you have owned tribal land before, you would know that you start off with your certificate um, and with your certificate, your certificate did not have a, an expiry date, did not have a date of which your rights expire or end. Um, and historically, what used to happen is when you now need to bond or build or enter into any external contract that uses that property as security, you needed to change it to common law. And this was because the certificates were not registered and you could only register when you trans when you change um, from customary um, right to um, common law right, which then um, reduced your infinite title to a certain number of years. When it was residential, it was about 99 years, commercial about 50 years. Um, and this has now been um, removed by the new Travel Land Act. So with the new um, registration of customary grants, the, you will not be losing that right, that infinite right. So it will remain with that right and it will continue to be registered at the, at the, at the deeds office, which means you can now use the, the new um, certificates or the new customary grants as um, for security or, or anything because they would be officially registered. 
the other thing that I've changed within Security of Tenor is that recording and digitization of all land transactions has been implemented or will be implemented. Um, transfer duty is payable to BURS with for tribal land before um, I think tribal land did not attract transfer duty. And then there is an allowance or recognition of digital signatures and um, the new act allows electronic um, conveyancing. So that just tells us that the um, government is intending on um, accepting and introducing digital processes um, within its, 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 um, its land management or land servicing um, processes. So that's something that we should be happy for. In terms of what we should expect or what kind of process is being carried out here, first, um, there is a requirement for um, tribal land parcels to be surveyed and registered in their large sizes um, by the land boards. That's the first thing that once the, the Tribal Land Act came into play, that's the first thing all the land boards started doing. Um, and in the land boards doing that, they were do, they have got discretion in terms of where they start. So they can go big, um, register the larger piece, and then register the smaller pieces um, within their jurisdiction. Or they can register first where people have occupied and then register the larger piece. So each land board has got um, its um, a it has got jurisdiction and. Um, authority in terms of how they would run to continue in in whichever direction that they choose to go um second thing that would happen after the land boards have been able to register all of these parcels and they get issued their own title deed then they would be able to register your land parcel um, and then give you your title deed there is um, a change in the submission of documents that you need to that needs to happen when it comes to transfer of tribal land. We will go into that, and then um, then obviously the introduction of the deed of customary land grant, which is in some way equivalent to what we what we have what we have known as a title deed um, going forward. So this is now a registrable um, land title for tribal land across the country. So just to have an understanding of the different acts that have been changed in the past couple of years. So we have got the Transfer Duty Act, which commenced in 2020, um, that then introduced the transfer duty on tribal land, introduced um, um, rates or changed in terms of the um, transfer duty rates for citizens versus non-citizens, um, and then had the exemption for first-time homeowners um, and the, require, the, the requirement for only um, transfer duty to be paid on transactions that are over or properties that are valued at over 1 million um, bula. The second act, um, or the one just before that, is the Trust Property Control Act of 2018. That one came, came in and that was just moving the control of regulations with regards to um, land and generally to the High Court. And then the Electronic Communication and Transaction Act, the reason why this is important and relevant is it speaks to um, the electronic conveyancing for immovable property um, and recognize electronic signatures. I see some people from the financial institutions. I think this is something that would please you um, in terms of now um, being able to lodge online um, or your conveyances being able to lodge online and um, different players being able to check how far the progress is of uh, registration of transfer um, online. So these are the intentions of these particular acts. The Land Survey Act, um, a little bit earlier than the others, but came into commencement 2018, is really about the um, just changes of how land can be described um, and how um, certain aspects like the, the water points, how they can be um, identified or how they should be identified in terms of their title deeds. If you look at the old um, deeds, you would find that sometimes um, the descriptors are using um, coordinates, sometimes they're just using um, other descriptions that do not give you exactly where that piece of land is. So you wouldn't have a plot number, you will just have um, a, a description that says, 
um, the land is in Mohononu measuring 300 kilometers by 500 kilometers, or it's a 25 by 30 by 25, but Hosina is specific um, description of exactly where this piece of land is. Now, the Deeds Registry Act um, also sets out um, procedures for implementation of the Act. Um, it sets out different um, forms, different types of things that needed to be um, um, submitted for different processes within the Deeds Registry. And the most, um, the most recent one, which is the Tribal Regulations, um, which set out the implementation of the Deeds Registry Act and the prescribed form. So we'll go through the different forms as we continue. So um, as I said earlier, the processes have changed a little bit. So what needs to happen first is the registration of the larger um, cadastral um, area of the exact um, tribal area or tribal land. I'll show examples of how they come to be or, or what exactly is the resulting document after that has been registered. And then depending on the direction, whether they go through a general plan for the area or then they subdivide that particular area, the processes sort of differ. And once these processes have happened and both have been able to come with a general plan for that particular tribal land jurisdiction, then the generation of the um, the deed of customary land for you, for um, individuals, would then be um, implementable. So the reason why we are having blockages is because some of the of the land boards have chosen this route, some of the land boards have chosen this route, and depending on how fast they are able to get to this point, um, that's where you have differences between one land board and another and them being able to execute. Some are faster than others because a lot of their land parcels were already surveyed, so they don't need to go through an extensive process, while others have only started um, the, 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 the greater survey of their, of their, their land parcels um, recently. So that's where the differences in the, the, the blockages are and the frustrations are. Let me just block stop here and check if we have got any questions. Um, at the moment, no questions have come through. Okay. So what are the documents that are required and what is the resulting document at the end? Remember, we are here. So the first thing that happens here um, after this has been, the process has been done, is the certificate of registered title. Um, and what would happen is that um, the land board itself has to have that draft, have to apply for that certificate, and then um, there would be a meeting of obviously the board of the of the land board um, that would have that board resolution, and then they submit the diagram that shows the cadastral area of um, that particular um, tribal land. Once um, the, everything has been adequately um, submitted and it's registered at the deeds registry there will be this title that um, would then be released to that particular land board. So the fundamental thing to understand is that historically, um, these are things that came out from the, the, the colonization rule and all of that where tribal land was not registered or recognized in any specific way. So in order for tribal land to be allocated to the next person, it needs to have its initial owner. And this is why this process is being carried out in this manner. The initial owner becomes the, um, the land board, which is the um, custodian of tribal land. And then that's when it can move on to the different stages. So where the land board is um, has done the, the cadastral, then they need to, to register specific parcels of land um, with regards to them owning it first and then being able to transfer it to you. They then need to draft accordingly, put in their application form, still go through the meeting and the, the board resolution, um, submit the diagram of all the subdivided plots. So that means if it's not going, then they have to have ownership of all the subdivisions, have the titles of those ones, and then be able um, to submit um, for um, that particular title and then be able to transfer it. Once they have been able to get all of that, then they will have the general plan. The part that I missed here is 
the planning permission and that's where you would have the tribal land having all the parcels of land being allocated to a particular um, planning uh, zone uh, uh, so that um, it's known what how many land parcels are, are residential, how many are industrial, how many are whichever um, other land use um, going forward. So cumulatively all of that, once the planning approval has been done, then the general plan is then created. And now applying for the general plan will then require that planning permission that came from, that was requested before, um, the title deeds for all the pieces of land, um, the draft general plan that is to be approved, and then um, the board resolution, and they would have the title of all the different um, parcels of or different portions of, of that particular um, tribal land. So with all of this processes, as, um, as I've explained them, I think you have already started experiencing these um, in the different sectors. There's obviously teething problems in terms of all these forms that need to be submitted. There isn't already yet a, um, a standardized form for each land board. So you find that some land boards would have certain requirements and some land boards wouldn't have certain requirements, but they are currently working on finding a way to standardize all of the forms so that you don't have a different experience with the Gweng land board versus um, the Gasani land board or the Bubira land board and the like. So they're trying to also standardize and see where the differences are and why the applications of the differences and how they can be done. So that's where you are finding when you go to the different land boards, you have got a varied adoption of their processes. Uh, meanwhile, at the end of the day, they are heading towards the same end or the same um, uh, destination. And then you have got um, the different establishment of processes by stakeholders. That means um, the different stakeholders would include your BRS because there is a requirement for valuation of all property, including tribal land property, for them to be able to transfer or register it. Um, and the reason why BRS also wants this is for them to know the value of land held by each um, land board. So BRS needs to have a process of when they receive the title, the, the, the valuations, um, how do they then process them to be able to give the, 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 um, um, the clearance for that particular land parcels. Um, and there are different institutions. I think even the financial institutions would have different processes that they, they're looking at what is going to happen and what the documents mean and all of that. How do they process travel land um, uh, transactions? So we are expecting to see different um, stakeholders looking at this act and coming up with how they are going to deal with it. They have to establish different policies. And they have to establish how they are going to um, the deal with um, tribal land going forward because historically the simple thing was if it's tribal land it moves to being common law um, and then it's a title deed and it goes on like that. And so as such we will find while the different um, institutions from the land board from government to um, private sector to quasi um, organizations, all of them looking at interim processes while they establish their final process in order to deal with um, things happening. Because at the end of the day, from January to April and just before the, the, the Tribal Land Act was enacted um, or commenced, um, there were transactions that were um, on the way. So they need to be processed one way or another. So the, the intention is that none of the land boards is supposed to stop um, anybody from um, processing. BURS is not supposed to stop anybody from processing, um, but they need to find a way to assist. And as such, um, you would obviously have certain delays, um, certain confusion and um, certain um, teething problems. What you can do in the return is get all your documents ready. And for you, the documents that you need first for um, customary land transfer is you need to have the ID copy of the transferee. This is the current owner of the property. Um, the affidavit of, of births or the actual birth certificate or ID or whatever. Marital status of the transferee, 
um, proof of marital status where concerned, spousal consent where, 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 where relevant, and then title deed of the transferor. Now, the challenge here is that um, transactions that were done before the Tribal Land Act, the um, land boards are choosing to deal with them differently. So you may find some of them will say, no, we need to, to register the title of the previous owner first, and then we will do um, transfer it to the new owner, um, or they are happy to um, do the first registration in the new owner. So what you need to prepare yourself for is that these can be dealt with um, differently depending on how each land board deals with it. You need to have the BRS clearance letter, and the BRS clearance letter historically has to do with um, any kind of BRS um, or any kind of taxes that you might be owing, whether related to land or not. So those need to be cleared, and they need to give you um, the clearance on your um, transfer duty or that you have submitted um, the, 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 the valuation report for them to be able to transfer to charge your, you um, the appropriate transfer duty. So as such, that was how you would be able to get your deed of customary land transfer from, um, your, um, from yourself to the person that you are selling to. Second part would be still you need all of those um, documents, but when it comes to just single plot registration, which the land boards are then transferring to you, they will just go ahead and give you that. So what you need to do is submit to them um, your certificate ID, and then um, they will start processing and just be generating that. So the reason why there could be a delay here is that this document only comes out after this document this document has come out from the original owner so you need to be able to um figure out um how quickly this can be done at the particular land board and then you can be able to submit these for transfer purposes so um getting your valuations done we understand that for tribal land tribal land is mostly um, quite vast um, and many people own large pieces of land in or, or a significant number of um, land parcels in different jurisdictions um, in different um, um, land boards so we have come up with a process where what we require from you is um, what you need is your current certificate or lease even if um, it's still in your previous uh, or the person that you bought it from, if it's still under their name. You need to have images of the property. That is, um, if it's a Timu or a plot, <coughs> apologies, um, have images of its front um, and some sides just to give direction of exactly what the piece of land um, constitutes of. And if there is development on it, it is very important that you should have on hand the description um, if you have developed a, a, a borehole on, on, on a Timu, you should say what the borehole is and the um, quantum of water that it's able to, to produce. Um, if it is a farmhouse, you need to say how many bedrooms it is. And this applies um, no matter whether it's a residential property, a commercial property or whatever, you just need to be able to have um, at the top of your head or written somewhere the description of each property. And definitely you need to have an email address as this is a digital process. Um, the first step in this process is that you'd have to go to the GoSmart Value website. Um, and as you go to the GoSmart Value website, it will require you to go to the Valuations tab. Um, and on your phone, you would have to click there um, so that the menu can come out for the Valuations tab. Once you've clicked on the valuations tab, this is the page that you would see on your phone. You would, that's how you get um, to click on the valuations tab, and then you would see a similar thing. So you'd be able to see that. And then what you need to do is click on request valuation here, or request valuation here. The form that will come out of there would be a form like this. Um, this would come out whether it's on your laptop or your phone, um, it will come like this. And what is required for you is to complete this form. It will take you different stages. And depending on the type of property and what the valuation type is, it will take you through the different processes um, and you'd be able to submit. Once you have submitted this form, 
um, you will get a quotation email to you. Um, and majority where the land parcels are empty and there isn't any major development or different development that requires an actual site visit, the valuation would be about 750 pula um, and it would be done um, immediately. Um, so once you accept the quotation, you make payment um, and your valuation report would be um, sent to you within four hours um, of receiving of that particular payment. Where can this, uh, where can you submit this valuation? Obviously, BORS is the most important thing at this point, particularly for land transfer. This valuation can be submitted to BDC, to CEDA, to Standard Chartered, to FNB. And for insurance purposes, it can be um, submitted to FNI Botswana and to Kari. These are our partners and Bank Haburoni for, 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 for financing. These ones would be for financing. Um, pending that, I would, uh, I think this is, would be the end of our, um, my presentation to you and I would be um, taking on any questions. Um, if you want to ask a question, please just click on your mic um, and request to speak and I will let you um, to speak. Any questions? Okay, um, barring any questions, I think that would be the end of um, our presentation. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch, you can call me on my cell number 72111247. You can email us here or you can book a presentation um, or book a consultation. Um, and that's the, the um, what is it called? The URL for booking, and then um, this is the page that you would see. You can change here the reason why you want to meet us. You can change here who you want to see, and you book your time, book an appointment, and we'll be happy to um, talk to you about any of the real estate issues, not um, restricted to the discussion of today. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me um, this morning, and I look forward to further engagements with you. Thank you, and goodbye. Oh, there's a question there. Um, can the tribal land post transfer to a non-citizen, be transferred to a company name, or is the title? Oh, it can be transferred to um, a company or a person. Um, so it just has to be a, a legal person, whether it's company or, 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 or um, a human being. So the only difference is the processes. So for a non-citizen, you need to publish it. Um, and for, a, um, for citizens, um, you don't have to publish. And the publication does require that all the details of the transaction be um, part of that publication. So like I said earlier, from the who is buying from who, what is the land parcel that they are buying, how much are they buying it for, what are the terms of the contract it has to be part of that publication. Thank you so much for that, Harold. Um, is there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, and with that, um, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.